What's up? Welcome to the Rap Throwback. It's your boy Diz Megatron here with uh, Dre 40 Ounce, aka Soundwave. How's it going, dude? Doing good, man. Just uh, chilling on this Friday. Hell yeah. Ready to do a, another uh, Rap Throwback, man. We've got a good one coming. Yeah. We got Gang Related coming up. Gang Related, yep. The Double Disc Soundtrack. This came out in what? 97? 97? Let's see here. Yeah, October 7th, 1997. Got a little rumble back there. Letting us know he in the house. That's what he do. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> came out in October. Uh, with a couple of other releases. I think Gridlock might have came out in 97. Yep, yeah, sure did. Um, nice. So that was another soundtrack. So they dropped two of them in 97. So, this is all after Pop died, uh, Snoop has left the label, um, Daz is just kind of holding it down right now. Who left the label? Snoop. A after this? After no, before. Before. Oh, that's great. Snoop's lock. already gone. But on Gang Related, is he still on death row? No. So he left already? So this came out after Pac had passed? Yeah. Wow. Man. So there was like three or four albums that came out, if I remember right. Um, see, Christmas on Death Row, Greatest Hits doesn't really count. These are just, uh, let me go back to the label here. And Gang Related went double platinum, huh? It did, yeah. So we had uh, hmm. All Eyes on Me while Pac was alive. And then uh, after he passed, we had um, the Don Caluminati, the Dogfather, hmm. uh, Death Row's Greatest Hits, Christmas on Death Row, Nate Dog G Funk Classics. And then we ended up getting Gridlock, Lady of Rage, and then Gang Related. So they still were dropping pretty consistently after uh, Snoop left after Pac had passed where they drop uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight albums in about two years. Damn. That Gridlock soundtrack, I don't remember it. Was it any good? Um, no, I mean, there was a couple of decent tracks on there. But, yeah, um, it, wasn't that, it wasn't that memorable? No, not like... Mm. Not like uh, gang related, you know, double disc, and I mean, you had a lot of good shit. The the songs from Tupac on uh, Gridlocked were they were okay, hmm. nothing crazy. I think yeah. the the one that got the most play was uh, oh, what was it? Two of America's most no, that was uh, not Two of America's Most Wanted. It was called Wanted Dead or Alive. Hmm. So this soundtrack. Um, it was pretty good mm -hmm. uh, for having, I mean, it had a lot of songs on there, but they had some pretty good tracks. Um, I have a hard time remembering back in the day that Pac wasn't around anymore when it actually came out. That's crazy. Yeah, part of the appeal for me was, you know, you get four brand new Tupac songs. Yeah. And then uh, there's some artists that we heard for the first time, like Tech 9 and uh, The Realist. Yeah, the realist under a different name. Yeah, that was um, crazy. I, I don't even know how to pronounce that shit, but Tengmenian, Techmenian, I don't know. Techmenian the Vigilante. Yeah. But uh Yeah, and then the national debut of Tech Nine, like you said. Um what else did we have on here? Um got some Mac Ten. Yeah, with uh his producer doing Boots or Binky Mac. Binky Mac. Yep. Um, what else do we got here? Some Outlaws, Corrupt, mm -hmm. CJ a, Mac. A Dub Corrupt C. Solo. Yep, Corrupt Solo. That was another thing that stood out when I got that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, I mean, you get the Tupac songs. You got some uh, some up-and-coming artists like OFTB. They were on the label. Um, yeah. They never really had an album drop, but you can go to... Um, Spotify has the Lost Sessions, which are pretty much all the Death Row tracks that they did. 
Um, what else? They were also on Corrupts Against the Grain, OFTP, or OFTP. OFTP, were they? Yeah. Nice. I don't remember the track that they were on. Uh, well, yeah, it's a pretty good sound soundtrack. You got a lot of, uh, you know, I mean, uh, a lot of the Death Row artists on here. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I see Lady of Rage on here. She might be the only one that's missing. Yeah, she is missing, which is crazy. Because, uh, I mean, her album dropped shortly after this, too. Yeah. But, yeah. So the artwork, the cover, has uh, Tupac and is that, who's that, Dan Belushi or yes. something like that? Yes, yeah. Um, from the Untouchable Death Row Records it had up there uh, on, the, uh, on the top. I'm not sure if they ever, or why they wrote Untouchable death row records or what was going on like should just i don't know felt gangster that day well see i don't remember when they started using that as part of the label was pop still around when they started doing this i don't know it, i just it caught my eye and i was like how long did they or were they using that on other records the untouchable part um i'm curious to know if that was on uh, the machiavelli album yeah let's see i'll take a look all right. Did you watch this movie, Gang Related? I mean, you probably did. I did. Was it any good? Uh, I enjoyed it. I couldn't tell you too much about it because it's been a while. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was a good movie, I thought. I don't think I ever seen it. Yeah, the untouchable death row was on the Mac Valley shit. Where do you see that? Oh, right there, The Untouchable Death Row. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they were using that for some records. Oh, here, yeah, so I wonder... Uh, what else? All Eyes on Me, let's see. How long were they using this? Yeah, it'd be interesting to know. Um, so, you know, the album, Gang Related, I'm not sure what the expectations were at this point in time. Um... Did this come out? This came out before Retaliation, Revenge, and Get Back. It did, yeah. Okay. So, what Daz had done? At, did, no, they didn't so use it. All on eyes on me now. Okay. So it was. It came out right after Pop died. The Untouchable Death Row. Interesting. Yeah, um, I guess interesting timing. You know, I don't know. Yeah. You lose a big piece of your roster there. And what did the CD insert look like on this guy? Um, gang related? Yeah. Because you had it. You remember opening it up and looking at it? I don't think it? there was too much to it, if I no. uh, remember right. There Let's was see. no rest in peace Pac photo or nothing? Mm, damn. You got me there, man. Let's see. Doesn't look like it. Looks like they have a you know Pac's eyes there and then a photo from the movie set. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, so his eyes there with the um, target practice dude. Silhouette or whatever. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I don't remember too much in the booklet. Um, it, yeah. I feel like maybe there was more to it, but I don't know. Which soundtrack came out before this? Was it Gridlock? Yeah. Okay, so it wasn't that hot, so your expectations maybe for it weren't, I don't know. My expectations were low, to yeah. tell you the truth. I got it for the Dog Pound tracks and the Tupac tracks and the rest of it. I really didn't care. It was yeah. more of a collector's item for me. Yeah. You know, I knew I was going to have a handful of good shit, and you know, for the most part, that's all I wanted. But uh, it, it exceeded my expectations at the time, so. I remember right after this came out, they started mentioning that Daz was gonna have a solo record. Yeah. And I remember like chatting with you, um, just BSing like, oh, we're so looking forward to it. Like, it's gonna be dope. And you know, the week before it came out, we were still chatting about it. We were like at some party. Right. And we're just like, dude, next week that Daz is going to drop, man. Oh, I can't wait. You know, it's got, it's got to be good. You yeah. Know? And <clears throat> the expectations after hearing Daz's work on this record yeah. were sky high. 
some of my favorite work from Daz on yeah. this soundtrack, you know. Um, and he played a huge part in the soundtrack. He did a lot of songs, not only for him, but for a lot of the other artists. Yeah, he had some iconic too. tracks on here. Mm. And the so. production style was different than anything he had really did up until that point. Mm -hmm. And even after, you know, there's some elements that, I mean, I can pick up on that maybe tracks that he used mm -hmm. on the Chronic 2000 or maybe even a hint of Retaliation, Revenge, and Get Back. But this is pretty much its own sound, uh, in my opinion, for Daz. Yeah, he had a little unique um, sound or vibe on this on this uh, soundtrack. Right. Uh, it's even different from Retaliation Revenge. Um, it was cool though. So, I don't know, man, I think we should just bump it and uh, give our thoughts on this record. Yeah, let's do it, man. It's a good one. So, you know, let's start off with the first track here, <laughs> Way Too Major. It's a dope way to start off the CD. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of a, it, it's kind of a, I don't know, you think you're going to get some Daz classic shit throughout this, you know, soundtrack. Which we do, but not all of it. But man, you can't. This one right here yeah. is one of Daz's best beats. And know. so they have a video to this track too. Um, With Daz on it? Yeah, Daz and Trey D. I just, Damn. for whatever reason, it just popped in my head just now. But uh, yeah, man, I think it's a great way to start it off. It's upbeat. Um, shit, man. It, it's it's perfect for Daz and Trady, and it's a good way to kick the album off. Woo, woo. Yeah. The hook is dope. Yeah. What do you What do you give this? What do you score this song? Man, I. This is about as, as ten I, as it gets. It's a ten, man. Yeah, I give it a ten, man. There isn't anything about this song that I don't like. Yeah. I agree, man. It's a great. Uh, Pretty much a Daz solo, you know? Yeah. With Trey D on the hook Trey doing what he hook, does. And then uh, arm, well, some singer on the hook too. Mm -hmm. I don't like, know who that is, but. When you hear like Trey D on this soundtrack, up to this point, people knew what to do with Trey D. Right. Put him on hooks, give him a verse here and there. Mm -hmm. It was perfect. Well, he's got the uh, the voice contrast that works really well with Daz. It's yeah. Like they're two different types of voices. So I think that's why the dynamic works really good. Yeah. This is a song that could have been on a Daz solo. Oh, yeah. For sure, you know. Oh, yeah. Easily. This one gets a 10. I'm going to have to check this video out. I forgot what it's like, but I know it's there. Yeah, we got to do some video reactions next time. Fuck yeah. Pop this guy in there. Next track, Life So Hard, Tupac. Life's so hard. Another good one. Another this is just Tupac by himself, too. Pac, Solo, Snoop on the hook. Mm -hmm. um, Daz with a phenomenal beat, man. This is another 10. I, I, I have to give this one a 10. It's, it's flawless, in my opinion. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with this track at all. It turned out to be magic, timeless even. Yep. Uh, it's one of those songs that doesn't sound old. No, it doesn't. You know? yeah. It's a timeless, dope track uh tupac has some of his most memorable lines mm -hmm. on this or on this uh song could you know? arguably be the most gangsta shit he's done on the label yeah. could be snoop dogg doing his thing on the hook man do you see it's pretty cool it's so hard yeah it's awesome man i love it i i couldn't get enough of this track i still can't get enough of this track gee yeah so far so good man next track greed which is a pretty dope song um i'm not sure where it really belongs i think was it recorded for cube's album or for this soundtrack yeah for sure it's on war and peace volume one i have a memory of it being on another soundtrack maybe it was like no limit related but i don't know yeah maybe like i got the hook up or something like that yeah because it had um ghetto vet with this song on there those oh. two tracks were on there together um so i feel like maybe it was i got the hook up we'll have to we'll have to circle back to that one but i have I, a feeling you're right i kind of hate that about the song now that it was made for like three a, albums yeah like three albums yeah man i don't know why it bothers me but whatever 
well, yeah. I'm glad we have it, you know, because if it wasn't anywhere, I'd be pissed. Right. Looking for it. Yeah. But when we bought the CD, it was probably like, oh, we got chipped. And I think I Got the Hookup came out before both of these albums. Did it? I was probably like, thank God, so I can have this song. Because I didn't buy I Got the Hookup, I bet. I thought one of us did. Really? Maybe it was Alfredo. I'm not sure. We'd have to look at the soundtrack, because I know Bone Thugs was on one of those, too. There's a lot of good features mm, on it. We might have bit the bullet and got it. There's a lot of good features. (laughs) You got our money, P. Bastard. You did get get our money a few times. (laughs) So greed, dope beat, you know, yeah. we're just getting used to Buddha, the producer at this point, you know, right. it's like brand new to us and he's doing, you know, pretty good. Definitely did his thing. Yeah. Song gets a thumbs up for sure, man. I, I gave it a, I gave it like a nine. Yeah. I think I agree with you there and hit it with a nine. Yeah. I mean, could it be a 10? It's fucking good, but yeah, I, I went with you, I think I, I went nine. So the next track isn't too different. Um, I mean, it's in the same tree, family tree here. Yep. Mac 10 and all from the eye. Get your bang on. I don't know about you. And this was dope back in these on. days here. We had a Who Bangin' Records. Right. They were getting hot, you know. Mm-hmm. Binky Mac was making a lot of dope beats. Yeah. And uh, Mac 10 was proving that he could do this solo. Yeah, and you As know, a boss. I didn't know a lot about Binky Mac back then. I didn't know too much about who banging at the time, but mm-hmm. I mean, to his credit, I mean, this the beat sounds like it belongs on the soundtrack. Yeah, you know, so uh, I actually confused it for a Daz beat at first until I saw the credits and then had a closer listen. Yeah, yeah, it's good shit. I, I think like it. Binky Mac is one of those producers that got better when you went back and looked at his catalog. And started like listening to that old shit from Who Bangin' Records, right. all from the Eye and all that. And I was like, man, I don't think I appreciated this shit enough back then. He did some good but, shit on the Straight Outta Compton compilation. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, back in 97 or whatever, we're just on the heels of like 96, 95. Yeah. Real super hot shit coming out. Super hot shit. We just didn't really have enough time to really dissect it all, you know? No doubt, man. It was crazy. Because I, I would have been on the nuts. Binky Max shit's dope. Yeah. Bang on. Dope track, man. Dope track. I give it, I, uh, what did I give it, man? I give it a nine, man. Yeah, it's a nine for sure. Dope. Then we got uh, a track that was, it seems like it was just made for Nate Dogg, Mm -hmm. you know? Just for Nate Dogg to shine, you know? And one of the more memorable tracks for for Nate Dogg. Yeah. Um, Another track where I was confused by the producer credits, but... This one says it's produced by Nate Dogg. I don't know how much Nate really did produce or how true that is, but yeah. um, it fits him well. You know, we got a little feature from Daz, a little low-key Daz on the track. Yeah, a little low-key, um, man. It's uh, even but, lower key than some of his low-key songs right. on a Revenge Retaliation. It's cool, though. But I like this track for Nate Dogg. Yeah. I, I bump it. I mean, this shit gets stuck in my head. Uh, when I was listening to the first disc at work, like, this is the song that got stuck in my head. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, this is like Nate Dogg featuring Daz a little bit. Right. And, uh, it's cool, man. It was perfect for Nate. Rest in peace, Nate Dogg. Rest in peace, Nate. These are some of the songs that make you remember that he was like, like the master at his craft, you know? Right. The singing... He yeah, was more hooks. than hooks, you know. Yeah. So I mean, he he had some good shit. Like he had a dope song on "Murder Was the Case." Yeah. Um, and I would say that this is probably right up there with that track. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd give it an eight overall, but for Nate Dogg, this is one of his best. Yeah. Uh, I gave it a nine. I think it's got a good place in the gangster rap history books. Um, it's one of his memorable tracks definitely helps cement him as you know the king of whatever it is hooks right. whatever he does you know he's uh yeah there's only one nate dog man we'll go check out nate dog jr have you heard any of his shit a little bit he kind of sounds like his dad Dude, there are times where he sounds exactly like his dad but i almost feel like he does the rap and singing balance a lot better than nate did well more shall come from that than i bet yeah 
Mash for our dreams. It's actually not a bad song. No, not bad. You got Daz and the Outlaws. We have Storm on there. Mm -hmm. um, not a bad track, but you know, Daz beat sounds a little like Retaliation, Revenge, and Get Back. Just a little. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not bad. I think I'd. And then you have Storm here, who is kind of being groomed as being the next. Well, just kind of being like the lady version of Pac. Back in the day, I used to, I think, I don't know if I skipped this song or I just didn't hear it. I don't think I owned this I, soundtrack physically. Yeah. When I would bump this soundtrack, there'd be days I'd listen to it and days that I wouldn't. Yeah. Well, listening to it now, I give it a, an eight. You know, I think it's, it's up there. It's a good song, you know. This yeah. Storm Chick, she had potential. She held her own here. Yeah. I'd give it an 8 too. So, free them all. Yeah. This is uh, the first time I've ever heard of the realist, even though he went by a different name. Um, which is interesting because, uh, you know, this song was made by QD3. Yeah. But it never really resonated with me. I didn't I didn't really care for it. Um QD3, you know, he's a uh, he's pretty good at making beats. Mm -hmm. And I I get the feeling he's not cheap. So, I think they tried to really do these guys a solid in trying to, you know, get their names out there and level yeah. them up. Um But yeah, we got J Flex and the Realist. The realist formerly known as Tenkamenian. Tenkamenian. The Vigilante. Huh. But, uh... Such a strange name. I wonder what it means. Where it got it. Yeah, it is strange. It's all good. But not a bad track, man. I mean... Mm -hmm. For me, this one bounces right around a 7 or an 8. Yeah. Um, I, I probably... I'm gonna roll with the 8, though. I gave it a seven. It's a good realist verse, you know, just yeah. knowing that this was probably one of the first couple of tracks he recorded, you know, he kind of was already refined here. You know, it sounds like some of his other stuff that came out later. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, didn't come off or he didn't start on death row, like sucking at rap. Right. You know, he was, he was already pretty good. So to his credit. He wasn't just hired because they thought he was a Tupac clone or something. Next track then we got Staring Through My Rear View. Yeah, smooth track, man. Um, produced by Tupac and Tyrone Rice. Um, I'm gonna click on Tyrone's name here. Oh, heard him bad. Okay, my bad, so I remember. So he did a lot of work on um, Seven Day Theory. Yeah. So, uh, very smooth track, man. I I like it a lot. This one's always on my playlists. Um, the Outlaws Deliver. There isn't really a weak point in the song, man. So I, I would give this one a 10. Yeah, I scored it high. I think I gave it a 10 as well. Um, I just, I, I can recognize that this is definitely a uh, classic Tupac and Outlaws track for sure. Um, yeah, one of those tracks, man, that they, like, just reminds me of that whole Outlaws record that mm. came out with Tupac. So then the next track is uh, Devotion, which uh, we talked about this Paradise um, chick. Yeah. Her flow is kind of cool. It kind of reminds me of like just that 90s style of rap, you know. It takes me back. Um, the beat I, has I that it. vibe it's, too. Yeah, yeah, it does have that vibe, right? Um, yeah, never heard of her before. We looked her up and it looked like she did some work for the Above the Rim soundtrack. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I didn't really listen to this song enough. Uh, it just never really resonated with me. So I ain't trying to be a hater, but I 
scored this one a seven. Yeah. In between a six and a seven. It just doesn't really stand out to me, but I I get the I can see the production value and the and the quality that they were going for. So and it is a soundtrack, so you're gonna get music that don't necessarily listen to. But yeah. Yeah. You know, I gave the song a nine. Yeah. I think it's good. I think it's a little out of place mm -hmm. on this soundtrack. I think what I like about it is that it it's stuck in the nineties. Yeah. It's definitely stuck in time. You know? Like there you can't hear this and be like, when did this come out? It's like this is definitely a nineties track, man. Right. <laughs> I love it because of that I think. It's no it's unmistakably a nineties track. True. You know, the way she raps and the beat you the know beat, the everything hook. they're using the hook mm -hmm. i don't know man i want i want to see crisscross come out their pants backwards and just start <laughs> rapping with this chick or something yeah but you know it doesn't do the soundtrack any favors but it it's still cool i like it it's a little out of place though i can see that so let's see next track we got questions we're skipping R and B's, yeah. You know, so we got the next hip hop track here by Tech Nine. So <clears throat> got Tech Nine. This is the first time he's been nationally put in front of a audience, I guess, on a soundtrack or an album or anything like that. Yeah, pretty much underground up until this point. Um, so you got QD three. So he's got a good producer behind him. I don't yeah. know what Death Row was trying to do with this or if they were trying to do anything with this um be interesting to see if tech nine has any interviews about that but um a very young tech nine not a bad track um I'd probably give it like i'd give it an eight you know this is funny it's qd3 again and again i think it's a forgettable track for me like I didn't really score it favorably. Yeah. Um, I think it's a forgettable. I gave it a low six. I don't even really like it. Uh, I like it's a historical piece, mm -hmm. you know. So I give it its respect, but um, I don't vibe with it, man. I mean, it's kind of cool to hear that Tech Nine here. You know, he's almost. This is like that. This really is before the storm. This you know, is beginner, he, yeah, beginner Tech Nine. Like you can yeah. hear some of those elements that. Mm -hmm. are a really big staple in his cadence yeah. now but yeah i don't know maybe uh because i know some of the classic shit that nine's done like even like on that uh, thugged out albulation track with right. rick mouth you know um it might might be a little bit of a salt you know take my opinion with a grain of salt because of all that i might be comparing him to the tech nine that i really like you know i don't know either way interesting song Then we get to disc two, if you got the soundtrack. Actually, it's the last track of disc one. Oh, my bad, my bad. He right, he right. <laughs> Hollywood Bank Robbery. Got some of that gangsta DPG shit. Yep. And you said, performed by the gang Snoop Dogg and Corrupt. So the gang, we were saying, must be Daz and Trey D. Yeah, because they're the only ones not listed here right. separately. I don't know why they went as the gang on here. Maybe so, they were just having fun. Right, because they could have went as the gang on Way Too Major if they wanted to. Yeah. But uh, I love this track. It's a simple beat, but I like the idea of the song, and they all come correct on here. Yeah. Um, great beat, good verses. I don't really see a weak point in the track either, so I gave yeah. this one a 10. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I gave it a nine. Um, it's a. It's a great track. Snoop Dogg. I love his verse on here. He's like on the dog father shit, for sure. Just a real smooth flow, combined with some good old uh, Trey D here. You know, right. like you got the muscle, the gangsta right up in your track. Yeah, man. Trey Can't D lose. did add that little extra, extra street cred to your track. Yeah, dope track, man. Next track, Made Niggas with the Outlaws. Yeah, man, and uh, kick off disc two with Made Niggas. Uh, yeah, that's good right. Choice. Now, this is the disc two start. 
<laughs> it's a good way to start off the second disc. Yeah. Um, but another classic track with the Outlaws. Um, production's on point. Verses are on point. It's another 10. Yeah, I gave it a 10. I, I can recognize that this is a classic Tupac Outlaws song. This is what they were good at, you know, this type of vibe. It's cool. I like the that you know we had several of the outlaws in there all of them maybe um, did we have one missing i feel like there's always one missing but you know it was cool to have yeah it's so hard to remember it was cool that tupac started off the track we had the outlaws go and do really good verses mm. and then tupac ends it too yep. so it's dope that's, shit. that's a winning formula right there when yeah. you can have your stable artist start the track end the track and then you've yeah. got the supporting artist right in the middle I love that formula for a track. Moving along then. We got that corrupt solo. Whew, another banger. Hell of a banger here. Yeah, Loked Out Hood is a classic corrupt track, probably in the top 10 corrupt songs ever. Oh yeah, for um, sure, I bet. Maybe even top five, but uh, I scored it a 10, man. Yeah, it's definitely a 10. It's flawless. You got Daz definitely on top of his game here. And who can argue against a dope Daz beat for Corrupt to rap over? Yeah. Man? Like, what else could you ask for? It, for? Man. Yeah, exactly. You know, Corrupt is doing his thing here, just spitting, you know, the way Corrupt loves to spit. And it's cool to have uh, a little bit of Snoop here, too, just to give it that uh, DPG stamp. And this is approval. more thoughtful thought out corrupt this oh is yeah before he became this is, this ignorant is, yeah this is the corrupt everybody loves on the internet mm -hmm. you know before that uh, against the grain corrupt right. that was started splitting the fan base a little but yeah this is what everybody loved america loved this corrupt so i like drunk and ignorant corrupt too you yeah know? so do i especially me man that's what made me a fan <laughs> dope track though classic Then we got a uh, gang related here. Title track. The title track. Man. I'm, uh, it's cool that they got the title track. Yeah, it is. Uh, another banger, man. Hey, man, who decided all these guys should be on the same song, man? Give them a pat on the back. Right. Yeah, exactly. Whoever brought these guys into the studio, I don't know if that was organic or how that worked out or if dub c was just hanging out with cj mac that day i don't know but cj mac beautiful. really brought it he yeah. really brought it on this song man uh another classic man i mean it's another 10 i mean it's crazy how many 10s are on here but i gave this good. one an 11. whoa i'm like this is the star <laughs> of the show i don't know it's probably illegal to do this but you're getting an 11. nice I that just think it's the crown jewel. It's my favorite one, man. Like yeah. it's a step above my tens on here, so I'm just like, mm, I'm sorry, man. Hell yeah, an eleven. That's dope. I don't know if that even matters. Either way, I love it. I love what CJ Mac does here. I love what Trey D does here, man. He's just gangsta as fuck. Mm -hmm. And then you got Dub C spitting what might be, in my opinion, his greatest verse ever. Like this is why you bring in Dub C is for right. this, man. Just that memorable shit. And yeah, you got Daz on the hook with Dub C. Yep. Yeah, that's a good track, man. All right. Next track, then, we got OFTB. Keep your eyes open. You know, this is where I started questioning. Do we really start to get weaker on the soundtrack? Right. We might. I think they, they used all their heavy artillery already. They yeah. They have a couple shots left, but for the most part, they used up all their bullets. To be fair, anything that kind of comes after the gang-related song is going to be a little rough. You know, it's going to, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be, though, that bad. But OFTV, uh, I hardly noticed them as a yeah. kid. And I feel like on a soundtrack, you're going to notice that separation a lot more than you would on an album. Yeah. Yeah, so you're right about that. You could have like a star-studded track followed by somebody you don't even listen to. Anyways, I give that track a seven. Seven. 
So Lady Storm is an R&B track. So we're going to move on to uh, Take a Nigga Like Me by the Young Soldiers. Um, yeah, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really into this track back in the day, and I'm not into it now, you know? Nothing really changed. You know, sometimes a song will grow on me over a couple decades. You well, know? the beat, the beat is interesting to start, but it doesn't really, it doesn't deliver. Yeah. So I don't want to beat down on these guys, but this is one of the tracks that were just not memorable on here. Yeah. Just, eh. It's, it's filler. Filler. That's bad filler right there. Bad filler. Yes, not good filler. Yeah. That's that McDonald's pink slime right there. Damn. <laughs> pink slime. Next track is an R&B track, so we ain't going to say too much about that, you know. It's got its place, but I don't know. Right. We, we ain't here to listen to R&B. But we will listen to What's Your Fantasy by the Outlaws and Daz. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, Storm's in here, but just not listed. Right. Just, just which is listed weird. as an outlaw. Which the credits aren't perfect, I noticed. Yeah. I um, wonder about the CD insert, you know, if it had the credits right, you know? Um, now, you really, you, you like this song. You dig this track. I kind of dig it more the more I hear it. Right. Uh, I like hearing the outlaws, you know, they got some pretty good flow here. And, you know, it. The Outlaws and Nate Dogg are pretty underrated. Like, you never really hear about them together, but they've made some good songs. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like they have anyways. Uh, and the back of the CD doesn't have Storm listed either. And here's a question though. Is that even Nate Dogg on this song? Or is no. that just Daz? Well, it's just Daz. Nate, or Nate's not credited on the song. Okay, so it's Daz, but he's kind of doing like a Nate Dogg thing. Right. So, am I crazy thinking that Nate Dogg and the Outlaws have been on songs together? Uh, no. There's a song on the Tupac and Outlaws album called, um, fuck, what's it called? Uh, but they have a track together on that Tupac and Outlaws. Um, that might be it, though. Yeah. Well, they sound cool together, man. Um... I, that when Daz comes off here singing, it makes me think it was Nate Dogg initially. I had to do a double take. And I was like, nope, that's Daz. The song that uh, Nate Dogg's on is called Tattoo Tears. Oh. No, wait, Teardrops and Closed Caskets. Gotcha. Nate Dogg, Pac, and the Outlaws. Oh, and Nate Dogg, or no, yeah, Nate Dogg, Tupac. Oh, that was just Nate Dogg and Tupac. Never mind. I was thinking Changed Man, but the mm. outlaws aren't in that one. Anyway, this is a cool song, you know. It gets like an 8 for me. Yeah, I just, I'd give it an 8. Yeah. Barely an 8, but I'll give it an 8. But yeah, I do bump it. You know, I don't know, it's weird how I kind of score it like that, but I still bump it. So we got a change to come. Jade you know, Flex. Yeah, I mean, the beat's okay. I mean, I could tell it's quality. But I didn't really care for it. You know, I gave it like a six. Although, I mean, it's kind of an uplifting beat. Yeah. Somewhat. I mean, it's what you, I would expect from a soundtrack, I guess. Yeah. You know, I don't think J Flex or The Realist drop an album, we'd have something like this on there. I mean, maybe. But, uh... In the end, I wasn't a big fan. So, I, mean, I don't want to bash on it either. I don't know. Six is probably too low for it. I mean, it's a good, That's what it's I'm a saying, good, yeah. It's a good song. I'm going to hit it with the seven because yeah. you're right. Six is too low. Yeah. No, I think that's fair. It's actually not too bad, but it's just... Uh, it's like that other song. I, it's almost out of place. Right. You know? But it's a soundtrack, so it's hard to be... You, know, you can't be too picky on that, I no, guess, or can't. too brutal on that. You can't be too brutal on soundtracks. It's crazy. Agreed. All right, so the next song, we got Freak, Freak Something. Rollin'. 
Oh yeah, Roland. And to me, this one sounded heavy, like a DJ Quick song. Like, yeah, you said that, and then once I heard him rapping, I was like, oh shit. I never really thought of it that way, yeah. but he does sound like DJ Quick. And I think the beat almost sounds like a Quick beat too. It's got those elements, like the flute. It's the flute. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I can tell this is not Quick though. Because yeah. Quick sometimes hits higher notes in his verses. Like, or he's, it's hard to explain. No, I know what you mean, yeah. You'd have to skewer his voice a little bit, but, yeah. It, you can hear the similarities, for sure. Yeah. He's really close. It's crazy, huh? Mm-hmm. Anyways, hey, I still gave the song an eight. It's cool. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, he, his verses deliver, and I'm not a big fan of the track, but... I mean, he did his thing. He held his own, man. He did his thing. I gotta man. give him props for that. But um, I hit that one with the seven. Fair. All right. Next track is an R&B track, so you know we ain't really gonna say too much about of it or of it. Mm-hmm. But the last song, you know, we ride out with the Lost Souls, yep. Outlaws, and Tupac, Tupac and Outlaws. Yep. I give it a ten right off the bat. You know. Same. I mean, this soundtrack had so many tens on it it's crazy um but yeah they close it out with the solid banger one of Pac and the outlaws better songs yeah you know they used a lot of the good Pac and outlaw songs on this soundtrack and did save them for the tupac and outlaws album so that's yeah it's kind of interesting that they did that but <clears throat> i was happy they did when i bought it The Outlaws and Tupac at this point in time were making some classic tracks. Like they were probably on top of their game together, you know? Yeah. As far as we knew, I mean, who's to know what what it came next with them, you know? True. What could have been so, next if Pac were still alive? You could tell they were right in the thick of it, though, at this point, you know? So it's good shit. So, all in all, you know, that's the record, man. Uh, you know, we tried to skip the R&B shit, you know, um, just, you know, we stick with that gangsta shit. I don't really know how to judge R&B shit either, you know, so. Whatever. Me either. All in all, though, how do you, uh, how do you rank it, you know? What do you think? Well, as far as a soundtrack, I mean, if I have to rank it as a project, I'm probably going to hit it with like an eight just because of the filler and the R&B tracks and things like that. The tens are good enough to be able to raise above it, you know, and and be able to hold a good score, I think. But as far as a rap soundtrack, I mean, this might be one of the best ones I've heard. I'm having a hard time thinking of another one that could compare to it. Yeah, there's two things that make it tough, is that it's a soundtrack and it's a double disc. Mm -hmm. So there's several songs that are just like, skip, skip. Right. I don't like this song. But the really good songs are like fucking tens like they're dope yeah exactly so i mean it's rough it's it's rough but it is it is uh fair to ask the question is there a better soundtrack you know we're just talking soundtracks right i mean we'd have to bring up like tales of the hood and maybe um what's that other one called Original Gangsters was, oh, yeah. was Original one that Gangsters, was pretty I decent. That. That, had that MC Ren track on it. Yeah, it had some Spice One oh. on there too, I believe. Yeah, Slug, Slug, Slugs. So there's some, there's some soundtracks out there that are worth uh, checking out, seeing how they compare. But this one had a lot of Death Row flavor on yeah. it. Some of Daz's best work. Absolutely. You know, some of Trey D's iconic verses, you know. It had Dub C's best on here. Yeah. Uh, some of the songs here were really just or you know like stuck in the 90s which i love um it's a it's a historical cd as well as a just a damn good cd so the staple artists from the labels like pop daz trady corrupt yeah. snoop all of those guys delivered yeah for on sure the product here so big props to them i mean i know for a soundtrack i don't know if people usually do their best work for a soundtrack but no usually you think you get like leftover songs right. or something right or right. you're paid to just do the title track for this movie you're just going you in go. and you're writing a verse that you don't even really have a lot of passion about yeah um but man they they totally nailed it on these guys so 
Yeah. I love this soundtrack. It just reminded me how much I liked it going through it one more time. So what are your three favorite tracks on here? Ooh, that is so hard. But I will attempt to give it a shot. Um, I'm just going to go right off the top of my head. Life so hard. Way too major. And I'm going to go Made Niggas. Made Niggas. There's a lot of songs I could have picked from. Like uh, We went through and mentioned all the tens. Any of those three could have been yeah. the top three. All right. So here's the three I'm going to pick. I'm going to go ahead and pick Way Too Major, Life So Hard, and then Gang Related. Nice. So we're pretty close. Yeah. You know, I wanted to put Corrupt Solo on there, but it was hard to take a song out of the top three that I already had, you know? It's just like, like I said, those top three could be interchangeable. You know, I think, yeah, I think Corrupt gets number four. Honestly, I mean, I just, the three that I picked seem to be the most iconic in my head mm -hmm. of the soundtrack. Um, but Corrupt, you know, also gave an iconic track here too you know that that's you know timeless yeah one of those timeless tracks you dropped a classic what's the crown jewel that you pull from here me it's gonna be life so hard life so I mean, hard i bought this shit for the tupac songs mostly yeah you know i i did want the dpg shit too but you know for going in on the tupac tracks life so hard was one that blew my mind when I bought this soundtrack. I could not believe the level that Daz and Tupac were operating at. That is a super dope track. I'm going to say that the crown jewel for me would have to be um, Gang Related, the title track. Nice. I love those guys. I want more of those guys. Give me more. Give me more. Even though they're, none of them are really death row artists or I mean, Trey D kind of is. Not really signed. I don't know. Yeah, Hard I mean, for me to say. But I love he that He was song. getting paid by the row, but I don't think they were ever really making a record for him. Yeah. You know, he was just kind of an affiliate. All in all, I give the soundtrack an eight. You know, an eight. I think the songs that are on here that are like super dope are just super dope enough to carry it, carry the entire thing through. And, mm. you know, I kind of look at it like what I pay for that. I would pay for it, but I would understand that I'm getting an eight. You right. Know? But I love the songs that I love. Yeah. So, um, just to piggyback on what you said, you know, I'd give it an eight too. Um, there's a lot of tracks I don't listen to, but the tens that are on here, the the bangers, really raise it to the top, and it can carry it to an eight, even though there's a good amount of songs that I skip. Yeah. So. Definitely my favorite Daz production era. You know, the production that Daz did on here is classic. And yeah. I think some of it kind of spills over into the Chronic 2000. There might be one or two tracks that you can kind of pull from. Oh, maybe he did it around this era. But yeah. for the most part, it just stuck on this soundtrack. And there wasn't really any more of that sound that we got to hear from Daz. Yeah, and you know, we were just getting ready for that retaliation, revenge, and get back. You right. know, this was like the uh, appetizer. Um, complete, kind of different sounds, mm -hmm. but kind of similar too. But um, it was cool. Daz was definitely like on top of his game around this era. So, yeah, gotta love it, man. 90s death row, can't go wrong. Classic shit, man. So, all right, man, well, that's gonna do it. Hit us up at rapthrowback.com. Leave us a comment, a voicemail. We'll put you on the show. Check out our YouTube channel, of course. If you're already watching it, hit subscribe for us, man. Get notified whenever we do another video. We got some cool reactions coming up. We'll do those next week, man. We gotta do some video reactions. Yeah, man. It's been a minute, man. We got some shit out there. And there's a couple videos even from this soundtrack that maybe yeah. you can check out. Like totally. Like Way Too Major and I forgot what the other one was. Made Niggas. Revisit yeah. that shit. In December, man, we'll have a. We're gonna. We should be doing like a year in review or some shit like that. Right. You know, something like that. You know, we'll take a look at some of the our favorite tracks from uh, the podcasts that we've done, and take a look at some of the good shit that you know people actually came out with in 21. Yeah, there's a lot of 
singles or yeah. you know, tracks Some that came singles, out in 2021 that we didn't oh, yeah. really get to touch on that yeah. would be fun to go over and just kind of give our opinion on you know a lot of good shit yeah so we'll check them out you guys got recommendations hit us up with that and shit man i think this set this is a uh, i think this will do it right on so this is megatron signing out Soundwave out peace peace